I'm Horst Angelinek from Germany. I am the director of Teiche Institute, uh, representing Teiche Schöko in Europe. When I first time came to China in 2004, so when I first came, of course, I was doing my PhD. I was doing it in the University of Cambridge, but I was writing about China's economic transition since reforms yeah. in 78, 1978. <laughs> I wanted to have an understanding what kind of economy, economic model, growth model China has compared to the West and what are the challenges and how does China's government and the people on an everyday basis cope with that huge transition. If you ask the question, do you like China? It's so fascinating, but uh, you cannot have a straight answer, yes, but after a while, after some weeks and months, you really understand and you really start to appreciate uh, China's culture, history, the difference, the richness of China's difference. And uh, if you ask me today, do you like China? Of course, I do. After a long day of work at the Taihe Institute, I, uh, I meet friends, I really enjoy my old friends. And, uh, well, I really like uh, all kinds of Chinese food and even spicy food. You can't really uh, believe when you're outside China, but once you come and you see that China has developed its own kind of modern art, and this becomes very present in this part of uh, Beijing. There is a certain critique of the Chinese development model as opposed to the model which the US dominated after the Second World War and where the US used different forms of power to make it a global standard. And you can critically say to create markets from, for the US economy. Development is freedom. I think, of course, every country has its rights to develop. So in this sense, it is completely right to say there is a freedom of development. Um, I think that the world probably needs new forms of development. So basically, the Belt and Road Initiative has a potential to become uh, a platform for a new multilateralism. And uh, the current world order, which is significantly changing, has its roots after the Second World War. And uh, it might be not fit for a globalized world as it is. So we can be actually looking forward that the new strong rising countries like China provide a new platform. The reason why I'm interested in the Belt and Road Initiative is because it's an unparalleled development program in the world. The Belt and Road Initiative has been received in a very positive sense by many countries. Uh, it, on the other hand, has received some skeptical comments and observations, mainly from Western Europe, uh, partially from the US. I think recently the Europe, European's perception of China has shifted from a certain ignorance to anxiety. There is a, a crisis of the liberal idea. Uh, many people in the societies don't buy in into this promise that along down the road there will be joint prosperity. Um, so this has created a lot of frustration. I think the countries alongside the Belt and Road Initiative in general can greatly benefit from the Belt and Road uh, program. And uh, also some of the European observers said that the program might create stability. China is providing a new vision for the world. I think this should be appreciated in first instance. I'm very optimistic and uh, I see that China can play a role model in various ways. On the one hand, China has demonstrated to build infrastructure very fast. The other side is also China, and you see it in the, in the new five-year plan. Uh, they say it's the greenest five-year plan. Having said that, always the previous five-year plans, they were always perceived as the greenest, but here um, there is a, the one pillar only concerns uh, sustainability. Uh, and the third one is not just talk, it is what China actually does. And uh, I think here China has still space for improvement, 
how like other countries uh, become eager to join that platform.